Hello, hello, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Teen Mom OG. This is season 7, episode 24. 24. I hope everyone is having a great hump day because you will see this on Wednesday morning-ish because it's only about quarter to 3 a.m. So hopefully you will see this by three something. <laughs> um, if you have not done so already, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel and become a J bird. Hello, hello, hello to all my J birds. I love my J birds. Okay. Um, do not forget to also like, comment, and share this video, and to always hit that notification bell because it lets you know when I have new videos up. If you have clicked the notification bell already and it is not working, make sure to unclick it refresh your page and then re-click it okay want to make sure that you're able to get those notifications um team mom og i feel bored now when i watch it and i don't know if i like that you know what i'm saying i'm like ah, i don't know if i like that any much you know and i because you don't want it to be like drama feel drama 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 but sometimes i'll be looking like you know macy what are you doing i don't know you know so that it was a little drag a little bit even um brianna not brianna yeah brianna be born i'm not brianna girl lord jesus cheyenne cheyenne sometimes i'm looking like it's just team not enough and team too much all at the same time but let's get it started. So Macy is bringing up how she is not making the decision yet to send Billy to private school. How she's going to just allow him to start the fourth grade and, you know, go to school and not even worry about it. Because he's still so young. Um, we do see them take him to school the following morning. And he's like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want you to walk me in school this time. So it's the first time that he has not wanted his mom to walk him into school. You know what I'm saying? So she's like, you know, what if he gets lost? Said I said, he's been going to school for four years. I'm sure he will not get lost. I said, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. But, of course, she said it's te te tearing up a little bit because he's her firstborn. And for the first time, you know, she's not taking him into a class. So, it was very, very sad. You know what I'm saying? So, we do see later that producers are talking to, um, ma wait. Oh, no. Yeah, the producers were talking to Macy and to Taylor also asking, like, they know that she... And him does not talk to Ryan, but if they know if Ryan has separately reached out to speak to Bentley, like Bentley has his own phone, he has his own iPad, so you know if Ryan has like reached out to just talk to Bentley, you know, just by himself. And then she was like, I don't, you know, we've kind of left that alone, you know, to our knowledge, he has not, but you know, that's just kind of what he does, so it's fine. And I'm looking like, that's so sad because he just don't reach out to his own son and he has no reason to not do that and as they said just because he can't talk to y'all he can still actively talk to Bentley and he still does not and then I'm looking like you know it was what it was we do see there at Ryan's parents house okay and Ryan's wife is there I don't like her like if I had 15 nerves she got on all 16 of them yep she would add an extra nerve to get one for me they bring up how Ryan has recently decided on his own to go to rehab. And, you know, because he had a whole relapse. It's like a 90-day uh, intensive, strict type of, of, of rehab this particular time. They say, yes, it was a relapse. And before he wanted, before it got out of control, he figured he needed to go some help. You know, his mom says, like, it's a very, very strict place. So we're on this place, you know, they can't even talk to him for the first seven days. And he only gets, in the after the seven days, he only gets two phone calls per week and it's only for 10 minutes each and they're very very strict on that ryan ass needs to go to somewhere that's like a six he need to be with butch at just to nip it in the pool he just need to be where butch ass is at and that's how i feel because he's getting my damn nerves so ryan wife don't say and i refuse to say well i'll say it mckenzie punk ass mckenzie little self say 
Ryan, you know, said that his kids deserve a healthy dad. And, you know, what better time to go to rehab than now? How about nine years ago when Billy, Billy's a whole nine-year-old? I hate when someone says, like, what's a better time for me to get sober? You could have been got clean and sober. You, and drug addiction is, you know, it's a hard thing to kick. I know that. But no one can say, like, what better time than now? I mean, there was plenty of better times than now. There was a whole bunch of times before now where you could have been clean. You just decided not to be that way. But, you know, at least he's trying to get clean, as they say. You know what I'm saying? She also then says how, you know what I'm saying, for me, I know he's going to miss this birth of our child. And at first, I could be, like, selfish. So I can't believe he would do that. But I feel like, you know what I'm saying, if he goes away and he misses the birth of our baby, but he comes back, you know, a better person, you know what I'm saying, like, better, like healthy or whatever, it's fine. <sighs> whatever. You know, his mom brings up how they have not told Macy yet that Ryan is in rehab. But they want to tell Bentley first. They want Bentley to hear from them and not from anybody else. The mom then says, like, I don't know how much I'm going to tell him. Dad then says, no, we're going to tell him. The whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Let him know that just because a person is on drugs or whatever, it does not make them a bad person. That's what pissed me off about Jen and Larry. Y'all want to sugarcoat y'all son fuck ups and y'all want to make it seem as if, you know what I'm saying, um, he isn't a bad person. Ryan has been a bad person the whole time we've known Ryan. He hasn't been a good person yet. So you can't say just because he does drugs does not mean he's a bad person. The drugs ain't what make Ryan a bad person. Ryan makes Ryan a bad person. Point blank to the period. And I also don't like how they want to talk to Bentley without talking to his mother. Like, you and Larry should have talked to Macy first. And then y'all should have let Macy decide how she wants y'all to talk to her son. Like, Jen and Larry be making these decisions on to, on talking to Bentley about things that they shouldn't but not be doing unless they talk to his mother first. What's going to happen is she going to stop letting his ass go over there. Okay? And, or she going to tell them, don't tell him shit. If you haven't told me yet, don't tell my son. That's what I would do. And it's a thing of, it's not that Macy should be the one to tell to tell Bentley about Ryan. But Macy should know something's going on with her son's father. And then she should be included on the decision to talk to her son about it. Point blank to the period. It just kind of pissed me off. You know what I'm saying? And then... Mackenzie don't matter, so she don't need to be involved, but I, I just don't like, I feel like when Mackenzie's there, they feel like, you know, they're a whole team, and they can kind of make these decisions about Bentley, because they're there for Ryan. Fuck Ryan, fuck Ryan, fuck Ryan, fuck Ryan, and fuck Mackenzie. I'm done. Um, Kate and Tyler. <sighs> you know, I feel like nothing happened. A little bit. As I'm looking through my notes for Kate and Tyler, it was some real simple. And I don't want to go through a whole little drag out thing. You know what I'm saying? They want to see Carly. You know, Carly's turning nine years old. You know, the her parents who adopt was it was that Teresa and whatever the, the, the Teresa I know is the mom's name. Um, is not letting them see her right now. So you know, we see them talking to Don a little bit, who's saying like, you know, she's proud of them for excuse me, the decision they made, you know, back then, and based on their their circumstances back then, they made the best decision for Carly because they knew they could not take care of her. And so for that, she's proud. Okay, we get that. You know, I see that whole thing. They want, But they want to, the, every year they have like a birthday cake and blow out a candle, whatever, it's all good and well. We also see how Nova is spoiled and how I feel like Kate almost allows Nova to act like that and how I feel like Tyler doesn't want her to act like that um Nova is in a whole mom 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 only mode and Tyler's like you know we can't give her what she wants she needs to understand right now mama can't do it I'm gonna do it or or whatever else and she's in a tub and she does she only wants Kate to come wash her up she does not want Tyler to wash her up because she's like I just want mom to do everything I want mom and Kate was doing something else. And Ty, like, you know, well, mom's doing something else right now. But we're waiting on you to get birthday cake. You know what I'm saying? So when you're ready for me to come here and watch you up, let me know. And then she's like, I don't want mom. Oh, no. He's like, well, all right, honey. Love you. Bye. Let me know when you're ready. And then he walks away. I feel like what Tyler was doing was, is what other parents do. 
I can't let my kid feel like they can throw a whole tantrum and then that tantrum gets them what they want. I can't let my child do that. So I feel like he like, you know what, I'm going to let her keep having them fits, but she's not going to get what she wants. She's going to wait for me to come and that's going to be that. So he like let her like just sit there and, you know, be all upset. So then Kate then says, oh, honey, what do you want? Why can't daddy wash you up? Because I want you to do it. And Tyler's like, well, I lost that battle. Meaning, I was letting her sit there and have to sit there. But then you kind of came in and gave her exactly what she wanted. You gave in to her, to her tantrum, and that's why she does it. I, you know, I'm like, whatever. They had a little cake, blow the little candles out. Happy, happy, happy. I'm like, not only that, why is she getting birthday cake when she's at the plum be full of her parents? Her ass went to bed with no cake, no ice cream, no water. Go to bed thirsty. Go to bed thirsty. But, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, whatever. We do then see Kate and Tyler having a conversation about, you know, the the birth, the, the adoptive parents of Carly. Kate brings up how, how she had been messaging and texting or whatever. Teresa and Teresa, has not, Teresa had not been responding. And she's like, yes, I sent her, like, a few messages on, on Facebook. Tyler said, wait, which, like, what's a few? Like, what, what do you mean? Well, I sent her this. When I sent her, so, she was like, I sent her this, 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 and this. You know, and then basically asked, like, you know, can we come visit? We can come for a day. We can come for this for dinner. Like, we're, we're willing to do whatever you guys want us to do. Um, even if it's a quick, quick, quick visit. And she's out of kept sending, like, different suggestions or whatever. She said, you know, Teresa finally responded back and said, well, no, you guys live too far to just come and do dinner. However, right now is not the best time. Carly's at an age where she's kind of going through things. She's kind of finding herself, whatever. And so she's trying to find her place in life. And so, just right now isn't the right time um, to do it. Kate then says, that, well, I was like, that's so vague. Like, that doesn't really say anything. So, I responded back, asked her, like, well, what's wrong with her? And she was like, and Teresa kind of just responded back and said, not to sound mean, but there's nothing else I can tell you. You know what I'm saying? She's fine, and we can plan a visit at a better time. I feel like this is what happened. <sighs> when Tyler and Kate initially was on 16 and pregnant, and they put their kid up for adoption. I think Teresa and her husband was like, okay, this is the chance for us to adopt a kid. They're on this one little show. And this is just one little show that is like a special. Remember, 16 and Pregnant was this. 16 and Pregnant was not a huge thing back then. So I feel like they did not think if we, ex if we adopt this girl from these kids, how 10 years later they're going to still be on TV talking about it and we're going to kind of be in the spotlight i don't think they thought that through and so i think every year when they realized okay these kids are like getting popular the show was getting popular the more popular the show got the less and less and less and less and less teresa her husband allowed carly to be involved we haven't seen carly since she was probably two or three so it's been a good six seven years that they've, you know, allowed her to be on camera. And I feel like they feel like we didn't sign up to be on this TV show journey for all these years. We was okay with doing it that one time thing and it would have been open, you know, but y'all wouldn't have been on TV. I thought like the reason they hold back so much is because y'all on a full fledged TV show and we not living that life. And because y'all always, it's always for the show, right now at the right time. And I feel like they have to kind of, Tyler and Kate need to understand that. And I, I just assume that's the reason. Because, again, it was only open thinking it wouldn't be this nine-year TV show. This is different, you know what I'm saying? So when they later go talk to Dawn, you know what I'm saying, who brings up how they want to have a better relationship with Carly's parents. You know, Kate, like, you know what I'm saying, I just feel like, you know, I want to have my daughters know or have these rememberings of them you know seeing each other and i'm like but that ain't how it's gonna be when you're on a tv show and they keep telling you they don't want that they don't want to be on the show like you should go visit them when y'all not when y'all not filming this when y'all not filming then go see her and maybe when y'all are filming bring up well yeah we saw her, but we weren't filming so that way at least they know the time that y'all see them ain't no cameras coming it ain't no oh well the cameras are here and they're gonna shoot around it like i feel like that's why they don't do it like don't go see her 
during the season. Go see her when y'all not filming scenes. I guess just do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Tyler brings up how for him, he understands now that um, they have to be okay with not being in control. How, you know, Teresa and the parents, you know what I'm saying, and how they sign their rights off and Carly is their child. She is. So all these issues y'all keep having, it's like y'all need to just remember that that's their child. And if they don't want to have y'all there, that's their business. Like, it's up to their discretion. And I feel like sometimes with Tyler and Kate coming off as if they're hovering parents over parents who's taking care of Crowdy, that's another reason why they kind of like, back up, back, back, back up. But, you know, what I'm saying? Don also, also just like suggests, like, you know, don't just contact them because y'all want something. Like, don't just contact them for a visit. Don't just contact them for information or pictures or video on Carly. Like, talks, like, text her and say, you know, how's Carly? How's school going with Carly? You know, let Teresa and, and I think it's Brandon, let them brag on their daughter without feeling like y'all are trying to get something to see her. And then in the aspect of her talking about Carly, you can talk about Nova, and then y'all can both exchange information with the kids. I still think that's smart. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's really, really smart. Um, and then Don gave her a bracelet because of her miscarriage. Because Don said she also had been through one and she just wanted something to commemorate the loss that she shared. It was cute and Kate was close to crying. You know, she was flattered. Um, Cheyenne. Cheyenne, it was easy to. Cheyenne, you know, talked to Zach, you know, after the whole dumbass fight they had. And, you know what I'm saying? He bring food and they talk. I feel like Cheyenne is a spoiled brat. And Cheyenne kind of gets what Cheyenne wants. And Cheyenne overreacts about everything and acts a plumby fool. And when she does that, she's rewarded because, oh, I'm so sorry, baby. What do you want to do? And so, you know, he tells her how, you know what I'm saying, he's sorry for what he did. He didn't mean it. He was just drunk, you know what I'm saying? That's not who I am. That's not who you are. I didn't, you know, it wasn't like that or whatever. Alcohol played a factor in what happened and I just didn't mean it. It's what he kept saying. And she's like, you know what? I just don't want to for I don't want to forgive you and you feel like I forgave you and you can do it again. Like I don't want you to think that's okay behavior. And then, you know what I'm saying? He said, Well, I get it, you know, I, I know it isn't he said, but I will say that I feel like a, a factor a reason that I did it was also, you know, from a place of mistrust. Cheyenne has to see that she makes it seem like she's still trying to fuck Corey. If she don't see that then she's blind. If she don't see it, then both her eyes don't work. And I think it's some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, well, I don't want to throw away a whole relationship with you just because, you know what I'm saying, we had this situation. But again, I don't want to have you think it's okay. And he's like, well, I don't. I know it's not. And I'll do whatever I have to do to fix this. I'm sorry. And she said, okay. I'm like, whatever. You know, we do see her and Corey then talking. She's so cordial that her and Zach, you know, are getting back together. But they're not living together. But they're back being a couple. And he's like, you know what? Um, he just laughs like you know what well, y'all so silly you know I feel like you want to be back, back with them so he can keep his TV um, we do you know we, that may be true we then see her Corey and her sister go visit her dad and her stepmom and the dad like you know so now, you know, Zach you know that ain't my guy I don't think Zach the one you're saying they keep going back and forth they're always breaking up and getting back together it's a constant back and forth and then Corey said you know well that's my problem like I want her to do whatever she's going to do, but however, I don't want to say, you know, be weird with my daughter to where she's consistently seeing somebody come in and out of her mom's life. I wouldn't want to do that with any girls I dated, and I don't want Cheyenne to do that either. He like, I do feel like, you know, me spending one-on-one -on -one time with Ryder, it has made her, me and her, very, very close. And I think what he means is Cheyenne so focused on some dude, like, maybe on the way to focus on your daughter. And I'm like, okay. It was boring. Um, <laughs> Amber, no, I, well, I guess I'll do Bristol and I'll do Amber. Um, Bristol closed on a new house. And so she's moving in, okay? And she likes a new house. We do see her on the phone with her sister. And she brings up how Dakota called her and told her how someone had broken into his house. And how it was the person who had been stalking her family since her mama ran for, ran for vice president years ago. And so, she's like, well, how does he know that's what it was? Like, oh, well, the guy's on video, like, breaking into the house. And then, she's like, so it's kind of crazy, crazy, crazy. And I'm scared because, you know, he's on the loose. And now I'm here by myself with the kids. 
So we then see her like taking a whole little self defense class, which is smart. You know, you want to be you know defensive. And we then see her and Dakota, her and Dakota have like a FaceTime conversation. And then he's like, well, yeah, the FBI was here. The, the Secret Service was here. Like, the police, it was all these things going on because this person has been, like, stalking, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's because I don't know why the FBI and the Secret Service and all them got involved. Because I'm looking like Sarah Palin wasn't there. Brissa wasn't there. I don't know if it's because he's an ex-Marine or whatever. I don't know why. Or because... He had been stalking for so long, they just, they just have to get involved. I'm not sure. But he says how all of them was there figuring things out. To, so he's been dealing with that. And then he kind of went from zero to 100 real fast. I told you about that, Jimson. I kept telling you, you know, now I can't seem crazy for how I was trying to be protective over the kids. And she's like, no one says you're crazy. No one's calling you crazy. I think what he was saying was when, I was, when we were together and I was being extra protective, y'all were saying... He crazy. Why is he acting like it's a big deal? Or he even said how I told you before we have to discuss, you know, situations and scenarios to be sure that the girls are always safe and you all you never wanted to um address it. She said, Yeah, I'll kinda of tell I won't think about it. He said, Well you can't not think about it. When you not think about it, stuff like this happens. But again, he went from zero to hundred really fast. I got his point, but I'm like, calm down, bro. The kids weren't there, I don't think. Um and then she's like, well, you know, that's not him. So I know what you're saying or whatever. I don't want this to be a whole thing. And then, like, the phone froze. The call ended. And when she tried to call him back, he didn't pick up. And she said, like, oh, now he's ignoring me. He made his have a bad signal. He just, I know on my iPhone or my iPad or my whatever, where if my thing freezes sometimes when I call the person right back, it doesn't pick up. And then I have to wait about two minutes and they call me right back. But I'm like, you know... Her and Dakota won't get along ever. Simply because I feel like one or the other one always is in a mode to be like, you're the wrong and I was right and you need to just admit that I was wrong. I mean that you're wrong and I was right. But I do get his frustration of we have we we needed to address this safety concern and you never wanted to. And now the thing something happened and this is the whole reason why I was, you know, protected before. It was still crazy. So I'm looking like, well, I mean, at least no one was hurt. So we see Amber. And Amber's on her way back to L to Indiana because she's been in L.A. for a month visiting Andrew's family. And so we see that whole thing of them packing. But back at Gary House, we see the producers talking to Christina. And, you know, she admits how she was having pains in her stomach, how something did not feel right. So she went to the doctor because the pains got worse and worse and worse. And she said, you know, even though she's had her tubes tied or whatever, that when she got to the doctor, they told her that she was basically pregnant and she had a type of pregnancy, meaning she was pregnant in her fallopian tubes and her fallopian, fallopian tubes. <laughs> and, you know, she said, so they did like a whole ultrasound and I heard the baby's heartbeat. The baby had a whole heartbeat, but they also told me there was nothing that they could do that I would not be able to carry this baby to term. And she was, of course, crying so bad because she said, and I had to tell them to go ahead, you know, take the baby. So she said for her it was sad because she heard the baby's heartbeat. So it was a living, breathing entity. And even though she knew she could not carry it to term, she still had to give the okay to go ahead and end the pregnancy. Um, it was very sad, uh, emotional and all that stuff. And, you know, seeing, she's like, you know, I have to allow them to, allow them to remove the baby. And she was crying and everything. And, you know, they asked, well, how was Gary taking it? He said, you know, Gary, she said, Gary's trying to, you know, hide his emotions. But I know he's hurting, too. Um, and they asked, like, you know, well, does anybody else know? And then she's like, well, only Leah. Because when we came home from the hospital, she was also here. And when she asked what was going on, we said nothing. She said, well, no. I know something's going on. Like, don't lie to me. Like, tell me the truth. And I'm like, Leah's nine. She's not six or five or four. Um, and she's a smart nine to where she paid attention to stuff. So they said because she was there, um, they told her the truth about what happened. So she knew about it or whatever. And, you know, it was just, it's just sad. Because you can tell she felt like, you know, I have my tubes tasked. So I should not be able to get pregnant. And I'm pretty sure that her and Gary don't use condoms because they're married and her tubes are tied. And so for her to, one, get pregnant 
be surprised that she's pregnant and then find out that she can't carry the baby to term because of course you can't carry a baby to term in your fallopian tubes um it's just a heartbreaking situation um and i feel so bad for her it was so sad so we do see amber and andrew come back and they went to go visit gary to see leah and they have their baby so they kind of ask because the baby was crying or whatever. And then Gary's like, yeah, we know me and Christina, you know, we aren't having any more kids. And so we're, not, we're done having kids. And they're like, really? He's like, yeah, you know, her tooth are tied. But, you know, I'm also going to get a vasectomy. And she was like, really? He said, well, I wasn't at first. He's like, but you know what I'm saying? And he explained the whole thing that Christina got pregnant. You know, and then she goes into how she had, she was a topic pregnancy. So it, they explained what happened. And Amber was like, Oh my God, like she got so empathetic, it made me tear up a little bit. Um, so for, you know, so for Gary, he's having the, the Gary's having the, no, 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 no. Gary's having this, God, Gary's having the vasectomy <laughs> to, you know, because they don't want to go through this situation again. So, as Christina, I'm like, we know I heard the heartbeat, and, um, you know, it was so sad. So, she was telling Amber what happened, and then Amber then admits, like, when she was with Matt, um, how she suffered a miscarriage that nobody knew about, and how she feels bad for Christina, because she knows what it feels like, whatever. And then, Leah then realizes her mom, tubes aren't tied, for one, and her mom is saying that she also had a miscarriage. And she says, how do you have this carriage if your tubes aren't tied? And I was like, oh, because to her nine-year-old brain, she feels like the reason for the miscarriage was the tubes being tied. Not that women have miscarriages um, for different reasons. And so, you know, they had they both sit at the same time. Like, sometimes your body just does things and it does not work out. And that's what it comes from. Um, and it was just so sad and you know what i'm saying i love how empathetic amber was to katrina it's like you know i'm so sorry for you know about that i'm so sorry that happened to you like it was just sad you know what i'm saying it was just sad or whatever we do see gary and, and christina talking a little bit later and you know gary brings up how he's okay with having the vasectomy because he does not want to ever have them have to experience what she experienced like he's like even though i'm sad i know it's much worse for you because it's your body and so he's like i just want to do whatever i can to make sure that doesn't help you know doesn't happen again and she says well i know that's kind of sad because you did want a son like you wanted a boy and then he said well it's okay because like i don't think i want more children because he already has two He's good. Because he has two. And, you know, she has an extra one, too. So, you know, there's enough kids to go around. Uh, but it was sweet for Gary to say, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm willing to do this just to be sure that you don't have to go through that again. And I'm like, now that's love. That is. And also because he went through it, too. So it was amazing. Uh, we do see Amber go back and tell Andrew about the whole miscarriage situation and, and how she told, you know, them about her miscarriage with, with Matt. And then the producer's like, we didn't know that you were pregnant with Matt or whatever. And then we never knew that. She said, yeah, it was, it was when we were in Vegas. You know, that's why he was getting so drunk or whatever and why he punched the wall. Because he was mad about it or whatever. And then, you know what I'm saying, she's like, and I just understand how, you know, it can take time to move on from a, from a, from a loss like that. And I'm like, it was just... Jesus, just fix it. It was just so sad. And that's how the episode went off. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Put your comments below. Do not forget to like, comment, and share this video. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay's Corner. Peace. He's like love, love, love. And you